Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of this teardown lab. Today, it's going to be a very simple day because I really have uh, decided that uh, I was going to tidy up my uh, front office and I found a Sony PlayStation, which wasn't my games console of choice. However, I do have one, and I do remember chipping one back in the day. I don't think it's the same one because I think the one that ended up chipped. Um, was in a skip in Loughborough University where I binned it. So I, I don't remember the reason. Um, but this is one of the memory cards that I found and I've never actually looked inside one and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be super boring and that it's just gonna be a PCB in one chip, but why not have a look? We could uh, see if we can make another one. I'm pretty sure you could use modern bits to do this. And it doesn't seem too dissimilar to the Nintendo GameCube memory card. So I've lifted the front and I think it needs a slide. Yeah, it feels like it needs a slide. Boom. And I have to admit there's more in there than I expected. So let's see what's on there. Yep. Right. So we have a Sony custom chip, which is a GXD8 732. Is that a nine or an O? You decide what that is. Um, some uh, resistors, a couple of capacitors, diode here. But what's this bad boy? Now, I have to admit, this is an unusual thing. I mean, it's a package with six legs and it says 6R. What do we think that is, guys? Is that, is that a resistor array of six ohms or is it, it has to be something more fantastical, doesn't it? Surely. Then it's just on a simple PCB with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pins. Hmm. Very interesting. According to the internet, this chip does not exist. So that's a bit of a shame. But I was rooting around and I found a website and it had this diagram on it. And I'll uh, zoom in so we can have a look. It's very thin line drawing, but it's fine. And this is basically an interface that somebody's made. And what they're using here is a PC parallel port and they're hard to find now. They don't really exist so much. But if you look at the end of the PCB and turn it that way, that's what you're looking at. Well, sorry, flip it that way. You turn it that way. That's what you see right there. And you can kind of figure out some stuff um, because you can see there's a power supply here. So you've got a seven to 15 volt supply and I'm guessing that's normally delivered by the uh, PlayStation itself to this pin here. But what they're doing is they're providing it externally. So it's going to the PlayStation, but it's also going via this power regulator and that is going to pin five. So I'm guessing the memory uh, card, or the device itself really, um, is expecting certain things and it could be, to do uh, well you can see actually here how the pins are laid out you have two short pins um, well, three and three short pins on this side and then long pins so that's normally to do with what makes and breaks contact when you're inserting and removing um, but the peripheral might be looking for um, a couple of different power supplies in fact if we turn it that way let's have a look it almost looks like actually this 7 to 15 volts isn't uh, sorry <laughs> isn't used because it goes here to this pin so it's not used um, but we can see that the probably I'm guessing it's going to be five volts or three v three. It is coming out here and then just going onto the board and doing its thing. Uh, so what else can we see? You've got a ground coming out to pin four. And is there anything else connected to ground? This uh, pin eighteen on the parallel port. But yeah, the basic idea of this was that if you made this interface and you had a parallel port, you could hook it up to a PC and that would allow you to uh, read the memory of this card and actually if you look somebody has made a Windows software that does that and there's a Linux software so you can just google that you'll find it I mean it probably is here Rafnet Electronic PSX card MGR you'll google it now there is a massive accompanying document if you if you search as well there's some links and it's a whole document about the PlayStation and this 
unfortunately printed on this horrible recycled paper, is an excerpt from that because it actually does go through in some detail the entire thing about the PlayStation's development and uh, notes on it. And I'm just going to skim over it though just to sort of uh, highlight some things here and I know it's going to be difficult for you to see at home. But he says here, the memory card for the PlayStation is 128 kilobytes of non-volatile RAM. Um, non-volatile RAM? 128 kilobytes it seems really tiny but okay this is split into 16 blocks each containing six kilobytes the first block is the header block uses directory of file allocation tables have got fat on it leaving 16 blocks left over for data storage okay the data blocks contain the program uh, data file name block name icon and other critical information so with that tiny amount of storage you remember like when you used to have these games and they had a little icon didn't they which uh, had the game icon you're trying to squeeze in actually all of that and it says there's um here <laughs> Each block is 64 frames, each 128 bytes. The first frame is the file name. Frames one to three contain the icon because you have, remember you used to have little uh, animations. So that's just three, three frames of animation going on with that. And then it's saying using the rest of the frames for saved data. And then it goes on to describe how the uh, file name works. You have the two bytes of country code, 10 bytes of product number, eight bytes of identify, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then if you go through this, I'm gonna zoom in so you can maybe see that it's really badly printed there you go you have an actual uh, example here showing uh, some of this where you have like the uh, data the blocks the header frames an example there and then uh, some code so something that would be interesting to do it would be to try to make a reader for this because there's probably little stopping you apart from uh, your inability to probably find a connector on this but if you flip it over on the back and have a look there if you wanted to you could just solder the appropriate wires to these vias here because they're not going to get in the way of inserting that back into a playstation and you can easily whip them off you could just use kynar i should think on that or if you want to you probably could use the contacts but you'd have to make sure that you really clean them up and then you of course you're soldering over that gold or copper um, tinning with solder which is going to corrode and give you a bad connection in the future so yeah it's pretty interesting it could be a future project where we could take an arduino or something and see if we can read uh, from that i mean it's just parallel stuff so you could bit bang to that um, looking on the uh, projects on the internet they're using a linux software so if we can get um, a the source code for that linux we may well be able to uh, run it entirely off a of Raspberry Pi. So I might start searching around for a Raspberry Pi. Let me down below, no down below, if you have any love for the PlayStation and whether or not you think we should probably try to decode this and see what game save data was on it. As ever, thanks for watching.